Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly Senior Citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this a brand new day. You may have noticed that my sign has not changed. I have not done any extra work out here. I've actually discovered why, and in fact, I have discovered more about myself in the last year than I have in the previous 58. I knew at a young age that I was depressed. I was officially diagnosed and prescribed medications at age 22 while I was in the Air Force when I finally got help. Since then, I have not understood anything because I've dealt with alcoholism, depression, the death of my wife so much. And so it's only been after therapy and able to get my head screwed on right that I've been able to look back and put a whole bunch of these pieces together. And in just a moment, I'm going to talk about those pieces because, of course, YouTube algorithms, uh, front-loading of videos. Hey, if you could toss me a like, if you like what you see in here, that would be cool. If you could subscribe to the channel as well, if you haven't, definitely a thumbs up on that. I enjoy comments immensely. I, excuse me. I read each one. I answer as many as my executive dysfunction will allow. I thumbs up each one I read. So cool on that. And of course, I do want to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These beautiful and awesome people are literally beautiful and awesome. They help to keep me alive. 99% of my disability payment goes to pay my rent. And if I did not have help from these people, I would not be able to do anything else. So thank you, each and every one of these beautiful and very awesome people. If you'd like to be one of these people there are links in the show more video description yay ah, front loading a video over but yeah i have discovered more in this past year i have discovered and been treated for medically partially my severe adhd boy did that limit my whole life i have discovered that i am in fact an autistic person and yesterday i discovered as well I have issues where I fall asleep in here and I talk about how you know by the time I feel the sleep train the tracks of the sleep train rumbling underneath my feet knowing that the train's gonna hit me I am too far along to be able to do anything about it so I fall asleep and then I'm a mess for the rest of the day and then I have trouble sleeping well, I started talking about this on Twitter yesterday. I went, I, I fell asleep. I ate some bread yesterday. You know, this morning, because I was yesterday typing this out. I ate some bread and I fell asleep. And I don't know what, what's doing this. You know, it's not the carbs. You know, because I can eat a bag of candy and have no issues staying awake. So it's not the carbohydrates. Uh, I don't understand. And someone said, uh, maybe it's a gluten issue. So I googled, you know, can gluten make you fall asleep? And guess what one of the most common side effects of not being able to tolerate gluten is? Uh, extreme fatigue, weakness, falling asleep. And that's me. One of the other major side effects of a gluten intolerance is the brain fog that comes with it. I already have brain fog from my fibro and a whole raft of issues. Pile the gluten intolerance brain fog on top of that. Is it any wonder I didn't get anything done as I was struggling just to function properly? I've got a gluten intolerance. I have had digestive issues my whole life. And one of the contributing factors I can see is just that, the gluten problem. I've eaten bread products my whole life. And I could not sleep last night. I was way too hot, but it was cold last night. And I was burning up. And that my belly still hurts from the bloating inside my intestines from the bread. And I was up middle of the night having to take care of the, the digestive issues down in the bathroom because of the bread. Oh boy, I have learned more about myself in the past year than I have in the previous 58. It is amazing. So on that note, understanding that, I should not feel bad 
that I do things like, I forgot to take my evening dose of my Ritalin last night. And looking back on it, I generally forget, well, I'm itching up her lip. I generally forget on those days that I've fallen asleep. And I fall asleep because I've eaten bread products. And then I have brain fog. And I've never understood that. There's reasons I've had issues taking my meds properly. So now I know I've got to keep gluten out of my system. Yay. I still laugh though when I'm at the store and I see gluten-free on, you know, tabs put on foods that d aren't, would don't even have gluten in them normally, you know, like yogurt and such like that. Uh, it's like you're looking at stuff that, you know, here's a pineapple, gluten-free. It's like, well, duh. But I understand in a way, I mean, if you've got gluten problems, then it's good to know. So I was not able to do a ton of creative thinking yesterday, and I still did things. I did some gaming, I did some such like that. One of the things I'm finding amusing and irritating now is I have been the kicking god so far in the game Dying Light. I'm in Act 2. It's been harder. There are a few spots where they are choke points. They are like infinite spawn points for zombies. You will always have them keep coming. You will not be able to keep up. Eventually, you will be overwhelmed if you stay in that spot. And a lot of them are a lot tougher just because it's Act 2. And there's a fence place that you have to get into and of course each one of those places you get in is an infinite spawn point for the zombies so you're in a real challenge to get into those areas and I am having difficulties I've lost weapons when I've tossed them into things I've been killed and then either not been able to find out where I was killed so I could go pick my weapons up but sometimes weapons go flying and they just, you lose them. So yay on that, but my kicking is still working, just not in every situation. <laughs> and so it's fun. I am enjoying that, I'm still playing it, and I went walkies last night, and that's good. Definitely a thumbs up on that. I still do that and enjoy myself while I'm doing that. It's just harder to think when I've got the brain fog and then I did, didn't take my Ritalin. So I still did some creative thought, and I'm going to talk about that as well as uh, some other things. So let me take a look at down on here because I forget a lot of things. <laughs> Especially, I'm still suffering the brain fog because my gut is still bloated from the bread, which means there's still the gluten affecting me up here too. Hopefully that's going to run out quickly. Ugh. But as I try to take a look down on my listing there, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I was thinking about while I was downstairs getting ready and I have forgotten entirely. So that that's joyous. Oh, I, I enjoy forgetting things. <sighs> but the one thing that I really wanted to talk about with, was now with my character Iron John, still, and his situation. Because that... My... Unconscious slash subconscious does a lot of symbolism and work on its own that I don't pick up on until later. One of the things I have come to fully understand more as I've done thinking about the character is, once again, it's in a way, it's me. Because this person is having to deal with the trauma of the death of their past while I'm still trying to deal with the trauma of the death of my wife. And so I am coming to a fuller understanding of how they're feeling and what they're thinking, but I'm not quite sure where their journey goes yet. Because I mentioned yesterday how there's this clunking sound in their chest when they remember the past. You can tell they're hurting because there is a, I still have these little moths that keep coming in my windows. I hate that part of having my window open. All these little moths come in because I got the lights on, yeah. Oh, let's try and remember. Okay, it's Iron John, <laughs> the bloody moth. But they have all of this grief that they're trying to deal with, and you can hear that clang, clang, clang when they're remembering. 
And as I said with their thoughts, they wouldn't say this because they are a simple person, easily satisfied. You know, they work as middle management and shop manager and they felt fulfilled and they would have been happy to do that until they could no longer function. But simple does not mean dumb, it just means uncomplicated. And so they're dealing with all of this pain and while I'd had the person say, yeah, um, they do, don't mind the pain because as long as it hurts, they remember. They also understand another thing about this. They cannot integrate into the present and then properly move on into the future while still clinging to the pain of the past. As long as it hurts, they remember. And only when it no longer hurts, then they will be truly lost in time. It is partly true. But on the other hand, clinging to this ball of pain that is the past isn't really helping them, is it? The past isn't going to come back. They are the only one of the, their kind left. No civilization is going to last, you know, 100,000 years, let alone 1.4 million. Their past is gone. And clinging to that pain is also clinging to that ball of pain and not being able to integrate and not being able to move forward past that grief. They know this. And things are getting worse for them in the short term because they don't want to cause any issues with others. They are a proud person in that they take their validation of their worth from themselves. They don't need the validation of others, but it is nice to have others to, you know, understand and appreciate your worth that you can give to others, but your own self-worth is not dependent on others' views of you. That is the way they feel. They are also a very private person. Because everyone who's around them and knows them also knows what it means. Everyone else feels sad around Iron John when that clunking and they lift up their hand from the pain. They know what's happening and they feel bad. But Iron John doesn't want to impose so they do a lot more self-isolation which also leads to more pain which leads to more isolation which leads to more pain and Iron John is approaching at this point a crisis where they're not going to be able to move forward there will be a literal point they are just unable to move because it hurts too much but they can't let go. And because of that, they are stuck mentally and physically, unable to go forward, unable to let go, unable to just move because they're in such mental agony. One of the things in fiction that you want to do is take a look at how your characters interact with things in the world. You do not want to have the kind of book, story, whatever, where it's then this happens so the characters do something, and then this happens so the characters do something, and then this happens, because then they're just walking like through an amusement park. Everything is pre-planned. None of their actions matter. The better idea of any kind of story is, yeah, have a presupposing event, or presupposing, a pre-existing event and then their reactions to that is what you work off of. And then everything from there is, yeah, there's an event here, but they're already reacting to this, and it's their reactions to something that drives what happens. There are consequences for each of their decisions. I don't want to have something happen to Iron John that is able to fix him he needs to be able to fix himself. And I'm not sure how that's going to happen right now. Iron John is on a very, very painful journey. 
But as I've come through the other side, I mean, I walked into a, a wood chipper face first when I got married. And it, it was hard, and I wasn't sure that I've survived, and I'm still not out of the woods yet, but I'm coming out the other side. <laughs> I'm scarred and damaged from it, but I live going through face first into the wood chipper. So I know Iron John can. I'm just not sure of the journey that Iron John is going to have to take to come out that other side. And I've opened up 24 hours where the comments my community tab, and I'm going to thank however many people have left me comments. There's more than zero, and as long as it's more than zero, that's awesome. Thank you, each and every one of you that does leave me a comment. If I mispronounce any username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count in American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my depression, fibro, brain fog from gluten intolerance, I, I do the best I can. So, let me call it my room. We have Crimson Random. I like the name very much, and thank you. Good good to have people talking in the comments. I appreciate good comments. Thank you. And then we have Zach Goodrich. Thumbs up. And, yeah, it's really bizarre having those characters just yell the one thing. It's, it is odd. And then there's Confused Owl 29. Thumbs up. Yep, it's a Greebly. There's a Greebly back there. Yay. <laughs> Jonas E.G. E J E N B E R G, thumbs up and thank you. And then we have non pork bacon, which is a heck of a thing to even think about, but thank you. Percy Blakeney, thumbs up and thank you. Margaret Thatcher, <laughs> with a very cute little, uh, what do you call them? It's the avatar thing. Very cute. Thumbs up. Thank you. And then Devo, greatly appreciated. Bang, bang, baby. And then we have W-O-G-E-S-H-W-A-R-A-N, Yogeshwaran. I sure hope I'm close. Thumbs up and thank you. Flora Mew, good to see you in the comments. And boy, I really like the character of Iron John. I hope I do them justice. And then we have Ben B, thumbs up and thank you. Good to see you in the comments. There's A-L-L-A-Y-A-H, I think it would be Aaliyah. I just want to make sure that I spelled it out properly in case, you know, in the state that I'm in, I did a horrible job of pronouncing it. And then there's Ray, Ray, R A Y Y A N K H A N, Rayan Khan, maybe? Thumbs up and thank you. And then there is, uh, it's pepperoni, but P E P P U H R O N I. <laughs> that thank you very much for each and every one of you having left me comments. It is greatly appreciated to get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people, if only for a short time and if only in text. And that is appreciated. Though thumbs up and thank you. And of course, with my hands in the air, I do not know what device you're watching this on, so I do not know where the text description in the show more is, nor do I know if you can even access it. When I watch videos on my PS4, YouTube has no comments that I can see, or no video descriptions at all, so I don't know if you can see it. But if you can, I do have various links down there, like to my Twitter, my Facebook, and again to my Patreon. And again, I want to thank each and every one of these Patreon patrons, these beautiful and awesome people literally help to keep me and my pets alive. And even though Amelia is going through another phase right now where she's just not eating... <sighs> So I don't know what's going on, but thank you each and every one of you for helping to buy food and keep her alive, to keep my hamster alive. It is appreciated, each and every one of you. Thumbs up and thank you. If you'd like to help me out without becoming a patron, I do have a PayPal link down below. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, there's an Amazon wish list link with things like cat food on it. There's other things on it as well, but, you know, of course, you're under no obligation to check that. It'd be nice if you did. It'd be your no obligations at all. And, of course, how do I say this? I've forgotten already. It's do not feel ob If you do not feel obligated, I don't feel entitled. And if you can't or you don't, see, I remember it. I'm just annoying at myself for forgetting. I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. And if you could, uh, toss me a like. I appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. And, of course, if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. Yay! I wish I was intelligent today. I'm still fighting off the last of the brain extra brain fog from the gluten. Now I know 
I have to just stay away from bread stuff, so yay. So this is the same, but next time you see, I will have more of this done. I promise. It's, it's going to get cleaned up. The spiders are already irritated because I took down the huge sky mansion that was up there. Oh, poor spiders. <laughs> Oh, with the cafe bug still raging, please, if you do not have to go out amongst the unmasked, unvaxxed, mouth-breathing plague rats, I can speak English, I promise, then please don't, and if you must maintain your social distancing, please wear a mask, wash your hands off, and try not to touch your face. Ah, get a vaccine if you haven't, get boosted if you can. Ah, ugh. Until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day. <coughs> Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.